In 2020, I started this channel with a dream of beer. I started that channel with a Fest beer roundup. Now here we are four years later. Do they still stand up? Are they still beer? Is it a Fest? I've got four things to open this time. Yay. just get them all done now so I don't have to work about worry about ducking the audio throughout. So today I will be drinking. I believe I've done all of these before, except I'm not sure if I've done Hofbrauhaus. So this is the authentic Fest beer in this roundup. And this is also a decidedly smaller roundup than some of my others. Um, but they're all returning, and I do believe I enjoyed all of them. I haven't yet tried Drew Brew this year, but I have drunk the other three, and I'm happy to say that all the fest beers I've tried so far, those three, have all been really good. So this is just going to be, why do I think they're good? Pretty much. I also went with little glasses, because those are the ones I have that match. <laughs> Anyways, let's start with the uh, the gold standard. So Hof Brauhaus is a German brewery. It is a Munich speciality. Uh, this is a... Um, an authentic Fest beer. So this is brewed according to the Reinheitsgebot, the German beer purity law. This has, um, this is served in Munich. Like I believe uh, Hofbrauhaus has one of the ginormous uh, Oktoberfest tents. And this is served in very, 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 very large quantities there. So start with the, uh, the authentic to see how the rest stand up. Figure out where our, where our measuring stick is at. And this is a pretty light golden. The, the smells are very, very malty. And I believe this is going to be 100% barley. I'm pretty sure. Because that is the, the, um, the law there for Reinheitsgebot. Very low hop character. I'm expecting a Fest beer to be malty, sweet, but not, not like cloyingly sweet. This is meant to be the... A, a very crushable, we would say in the U.S., beer. This is meant to be able to be drunk in very large quantities over the course of several days and without, you know, knocking you down. And so it's expected to be malty but, but light. We're expecting a little bit, maybe a little bit of toast character, but not very much at all. Um, because these grains are still pretty lightly roasted, we're not expecting a very strong roast character. It's mostly the sweetness, the graininess, the maltiness. And for me personally, apple juice, because that's pretty much what these evoke to me. Hmm. And yes, so the Hofbrau House starts creamy, and that's that's kind of the head getting in there first. And so you get this creamy start. You get this really nice. Um, it's not a watered down apple juice, but it's like a light apple juice. It's like half apple juice, half lager but I mean it is all lager so whatever um, that's how it kind of reads to me it, it it doesn't read like you diluted the apple juice but there is apple juice here and still an otherwise relatively full bodied beer for being light like it's it's light but it's full it's full but it's light it's really hard to describe there is a bit of effervescence playing on your on your tongue at the beginning that serves the what you would find in a, a tart beer. You know, it kind of makes you salivate. It's like it prepares your mouth. Hey, we're ready for some tasty beer here. Uh, so you get that that creaminess, that little bit of effervescence around your tongue, and then you get this really nice apple juice, malty, delicious, very smooth, and with a decently long finish too. The finish though is malty. It's not a hop finish. I mean, there are hops here. Just now, I'm finally getting a wee bit of spiciness, way kind of the, the sides and back of the tongue and then down the throat. And that's going to be your, your hops coming in really late here just to kind of wrap things up and say, hey, we're done. Time to drink again. So I shall. Yeah, that's such a good beer. Um, I've criticized beers in the past for kind of being disconnected, beginning, middle, and end, uh, having an empty middle. This has no empty middle. This is not disconnected. It is one uh, varying 
but consistent. Uh, the, the flavor is there the whole time. Let's put it that way. There's no disconnection. There's no emptiness in the middle. It's just you're passing from flavor to flavor, from, from um, sensation to sensation, and it's a really good journey. Good stuff. Hof Brauhaus, Oktoberfest beer, if you can find that, and you like the traditional stuff, or you want to know what traditional stuff is. Really good. Other really good brands would be Iyengar, 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 A-Y-I-N-G-E-R. I've had that in the past. When you talk to people online, that tends to be kind of a gold standard. Like they really, really enjoy that one as being a quality, quality um, Oktoberfest. Paul Lehner is another good, good one. Um, any of those, you know, German, big German brands making the beer, it's going to be very authentic. It's going to be really good. And if you want to know what, what Oktoberfest tastes like, get one of those. So let's move on to Rubens Fest beer, which I believe figured in my very first review as well. And this one, to the nose, I'm bringing up a bit more banana, which is very interesting. Banana is typically a result of the yeasts involved. And so they're going to be using different yeasts for the Rubens Fest beer than uh, Hofbrauhaus uses for theirs. You'll also expect to find banana in other traditional German styles like a Hefeweizen. So banana to the nose. And it's not like tons of banana. It's There's banana there with the maltiness. Just like there was apple with the maltiness in the, in the um, at least to the, the taste of Hofbrauhaus. So there is a little bit, a little bit of banana in the taste as well, and and it kind of couples with an apple juice note as well. The hops come in sooner on this one, and they aren't. I'm not gonna say they're stronger, though they probably are because they come in sooner. They're having to to uh, be a little bit louder over the malty uh, flavor of the beer. This one drinks really refreshing. It it. I don't think it's colder. I mean, they've been out of the fridge the exact same amount of time, probably 10 minutes here. There's still that effervescence around the tongue at the beginning that prepares your mouth, that makes you ready for, for good things. Um, and then you get, I think that the malt is a little bit drier, just a little bit. And so the banana stands out. The apple... Um, feels like it's over the top rather than integrated in like it is with the Hof Brauhaus. Not disconnected, but think of an apple tart versus um, apple pudding. Sure, whatever. <laughs> it's, it's, it's separated from, but at the same time as, right? So you get the crust and you get the apple versus in the Hof Brauhaus, it's all kind of the same thing. It's more like an apple bread, maybe. Yeah, I think that would be a good metaphor with the, the dryness of the malts that's more of a, a cracker or a, or a short crust. And then the apple's kind of over the top of that with that little hint of banana interestingness. And then the, the hops kind of build up just a little bit sooner, but they're not overwhelming. And in fact, I think the hops kind of finish out and then you're left with just this pleasant juiciness in your mouth as the finish. Um, maybe, maybe a little bit of spice coming up, but... I don't think so. I think that's. I think it's the the hops finish up, and then you're left with this kind of juicy finish to the beer. That's a very nice one. I like that one. It doesn't read quite so smooth as the, as the Hofbrau House, but that isn't really a problem necessarily. The Hofbrau House reads almost kind of like like I said, apple bread, a decadent kind of smoothness to it without being heavy, and the Fest beer. It's different. It's different, right? Let's leave it at that. Next is Sierra Nevada's Fest Beer. Now, I have had Sierra Nevada's Fest Beer in the past, and I have criticized it. But something to know about Sierra Nevada's Fest Beer is each year they partner with a different traditional German brewery. This year, it's with Gutmann. Um, so Sierra Nevada, a California brewery, and they partner with a German brewer to make their fest beer. In the past, the main reason I've criticized them is that they have added a lot of hops for the style. 
It's not an IPA. It's not even a pale ale by comparison, but it's still a lot of hops for a fast beer. A fast beer is to be about the malts. The hops should serve as a spice to kind of maybe wrap things up like the Hofbrauhaus or like the fest, like the Rubens. Um, it should not be its own part playing a dominant note, right? And in the past, the Sierra Nevada has had that problem. If you're an American who, per, or not even American, if you're someone who prefer, who likes hops, it was certainly an interesting beer. But according to the standard of what, it, what is a fest beer, it was further away from that, right? Hmm. So diving into here, it's apples. It's apple notes. This smells like a really nice fall up in the Sierra Nevadas. I'm thinking of Apple Hill. <laughs> Yeah, so, so it's closer in smell to the Hofbrau House. There's none of the banana that I picked up in the Rubens. Mm. Hmm. Okay, this is almost almost inverted from the Hofbrau House. Remember how with the Hofbrau House I said that it started with this creaminess? And then the apple came in later? This one starts with the apple... And then the creaminess comes, which almost like it's like you had apples on top of like warm apple compote on top of ice cream, right? Which is just amazing, right? So that's what this tastes like to me. It starts with the apples and then you get this creaminess coming in. And then behind that, you get this interesting earthiness that isn't a, a hop dominant flavor, but I think it's the hops mixing with a really nice malt body that that kind of comes back and says hey i'm here again and that's really that's really nice and they come in pretty quick succession so by now i'm already in that second malt and there's there's some harvest flavors in there i'm i'm thinking green beans almost or um and, and fresh breads, like a, a dark brown bread. Not a, not a black bread, but like a, a darker brown bread in there. Yeah. I think this splits the difference between the Rubens Fest beer and the Hofbrauhaus Oktoberfest beer in some ways. It has, it, it's, it's a bit closer to the Hofbrauhaus in the kind of the luxurious, the, the decadent, the sweetness. But there's still some interesting other high notes going on. And it might have to do with the fact that the Sierra Nevada and the Fest beer are both relatively local to me. Whereas Hofbrauhaus had to come from Germany. I believe this Hofbrauhaus was bottled quite recently, like um, uh, April, May, May, June, May. So it was, it was bottled in late May. So it is relatively recent. And I believe most of these were bottled, were canned in, most of the others were canned in um, late July. So they're like two months younger. So it might simply have to do with the freshness of the beer. This is still, being a malt forward beer, freshness isn't quite as hard of a rule as it would be with, say, a, a very um, hop forward beer like a pale ale or an IPA. But these are still even within the okay range for, for those more, more hop forward, more uh, the beers that'll whose flavors will will dissipate and fade more quickly. Uh, so these are still these are all within the definition of fresh. I just wonder if the it does the the canned ones do taste a little bit fresher to me. Let's just put it that way, right? But that might not be freshness. And finally, Drew Brew. This one I believe has figured in all of my other. Fest beer reviews as well. And I want to say I enjoyed it. I just don't have a clear memory. <sighs> oh, what's that? Hmm, there's some candy notes to the nose. It was almost a, a Martinelli's, like a real filtered apple cider kind of smell, but there's also a, an interesting candy note. Hmm. Color-wise, this has a touch more red than some of the others, but not too much. Hmm. Interesting. 
just in comparison with the others. I think I prefer the others, like all of the others more, but particularly the Sierra Nevada, you know, the Hofbrau House. But this has some legs, like it's lingering. I'm just, I'm not sure how to explain the, what I'm tasting yet. It is still very malt forward. There's also more vegetable notes to this. I'm tasting tomato. Um, and um, what else? I'm gonna try rinsing my mouth again. <sighs> yeah, okay, so the character is still Almost apple-y, but this time the apple tastes actually diluted. There's also some other, like, ripe vegetable, harvest vegetable flavors going on here. Tomato, definitely. Um, maybe maybe some sort of, of uh, gourd or squash kind of note. Maybe. Interesting. Um... It's really juicy. There is very little hop character. Like, I'm not even detecting a spiciness down in the back right now. Like, the, the overarching character of this is just this really bright harvest juiciness throughout my mouth. And it's still there. The grains are to the dry side, like they were with the Rubens. So it's less of the sweet, less of the kind of the, the sweet bread kind of flavor but there's sweetness there like I said there is apple there is an apple juice character there but it it does feel diluted and it's mixed with these interesting kind of harvest vegetables flavor har harvest vegetable flavors this is overall I think I think the hops come in a little bit sooner kind of like the the fest beer and they they kind of play a middle rather than a beginning or an end. And um, it produces this, rather than an earthy quality, like the, was that the Sierra Nevada? I can't recall. Um, like one of the others <laughs> did. It produces more of a, like of a garden vegetable, like, like or a vegetable garden sort of um, flavor on my palate. Um, I think... Because of this one's lack of sweetness, it would probably work well with, not with saltier dishes, but with some nice harvest vegetable savory dishes, or even semi-sweet dishes, actually. Um, you could have this very nicely with, with a squash, with a roasted squash, or something like that. Um, yeah, that would work really nicely, actually, I think. It feels more complex in some ways, but I think that's because <clears throat> the flavors are kind of all on top of each other. They're, they're happening a lot more closely together. Yeah. 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 It's a good beer. I'm enjoying it. Uh, of these, I'm going to say that the ones I prefer this year, personally, are the Hofbrau House and the Oktoberfest by Sierra Nevada. These are, these are really good. They are similar in some ways because they both play to the more sweet malt side of the, of the character, of the, uh, the style family. And that is, I believe, more traditional to what a fest beer is supposed to be. The others, the Rubens and the Drew Brew are definitely um, a little bit drier. And as such may, <clears throat> may appeal to the U.S. beer fans' palate more. But don't take my word for it. Try them all yourself, because they're all good. Anyways, this is me, Matthew. I have been drinking and enjoying several fast beers. And I'll catch y'all on the flip side. <sighs> Which one's the Hofbrau House? I can't remember. Yes.